enable us to understand the exegesis and interpretation of the scriptures. Bind us in the one accord of love. In your holy son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. A very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. Uh, we thank our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, to discuss uh, His wonderful words of life. Uh, so today uh, we are going to study about a vision that is uh, given to us in the book of uh, uh, Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah, sixth chapter, verses uh, one to eight. There, Zechariah is shown a vision. So, uh, let us uh, read those verses. Zechariah, sixth chapter. Um, verse uh, one. Okay. And I turned and lift up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were Mountains of brass. Very good. So here, Zechariah was shown a vision where uh, there came four chariots. Uh, you see, uh, between uh, the two mountains. Uh, you see, one after the other. So each and every chariot were of a different color. <clears throat> you see, each and every chariot had different color horses. And uh, these uh, chariots came between uh, two mountains, it seems. Uh, in whatever mountains were there, you see, it gives us uh, that it was a mountain made up of brass. That means two brass mountains were there in between these four chariots came. Okay, next. Verse 2 and 3, brother. Huh. <clears throat> in the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses, and in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, grizzled and grey horses. Very good. Buddha. So here the order is given of the chariots. It says in first chariot were red horses, uh, in second uh, black, in the third were white, and in the fourth it was a combination of two color of horses, uh, that is grizzled and bay, which is very dark or reddish brown. Okay, <clears throat> so these uh, four chariots uh, came between uh, two brass mountains, it seems. Uh, you see, so we all wonder what is the meaning of the this uh, you see uh, four chariots which are coming out of uh, two brass mountains uh, in between the two brass mountains. Uh, the same question actually you see was got uh, to Zechariah and Zechariah also questions the same thing to the angel who showed this one to Zechariah. Uh, read verse uh, four, brother. Zechariah six chapter verse four. <clears throat> Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my Lord? Very good. It says, What are these, uh, my Lord? <clears throat> you see? And what was the angel <clears throat> reply? Verse 5 and 6. <clears throat> and the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzle go forth toward the south country. Very good. So here it says <coughs> the uh, <coughs> four chariots uh, are actually four spirits of heaven <coughs> which go from the presence of the Lord of all the earth, it seems. And one more clue is also given, stating that the black horses uh, went to which direction? You see, it went to the north direction. You see, and white horses followed this uh, <coughs> black horses to the north direction. And the red horses, uh, actually the translation is grizzled is not a proper translation. It actually should be red horses. The red horses go toward the south uh, country, it seems. Okay, <clears throat> you see, the, horse, the black horses went to the north country, the white horses also went to the north country, and uh, 
you see the red horses uh, go to the south country now what lesson you see uh, can we learn from this one you see and uh, there is one more clue that is given in verse uh, 6 and 7 brother uh, please read brother verse 6 and 7 <coughs> And the bear went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get ye hence, so walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Very good. You see, the bear horses, you see, they requested the Lord that they may walk to and fro through the earth, it seems. So God gave them permission, okay, you go and walk to and fro through the earth, it seems. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let us read verse 8. <clears throat> Then cried he upon me, and he spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go forth toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Okay. So, the black horses uh, which have gone to the north country, these uh, are the horses which are actually you say, given peace, uh, quieted my spirit. Uh, that means, uh, you say, given that uh, satisfaction, you see, uh, you see, to God, it seems. Uh, so, this is the clue that is given in the book of Zechariah. You see, four chariots <clears throat> having four different uh, uh, colors of horses. Uh, now, what lesson can we learn from this one? <laughs> you see, it gives uh, they are gone in particular direction. So, how do we decode that? Uh, this vision of Zechariah. <clears throat> you see, we have studied in how to study the Bible. For the Bible, Bible is the one dictionary. So if you need to decode anything <clears throat> or if you need to find out any answer from for the Bible, you see any questions in the Bible, it has to be sought only from the Bible. <clears throat> so, dear brethren, how do we decode it? You see, first clue is that there are two brass mountains. That means what? In between these brass mountains, the four chariots came. That means the two brass mountains are far off. <clears throat> there is a valley. There is a gap between these two mountains. <clears throat> okay? So it is between these two mountains only these four chariots came. Now, it's very easy. Okay? Uh, what does mountain mean in the Bible? If you see, you see, in Daniel's second chapter, we read about the vision of a, a multi-metallic uh, image. You see, the head made up of gold, the hands and shoulders were made up of silver, the thigh, you see, and the stomach and the belly was made up of uh, brass, and the legs and feet were made up of iron. So suddenly, there was a <coughs> stone <coughs> untouched with human, human hands, came and smote the image. And ultimately, the entire structure was destroyed. And the stone that hit the image began to pound it and make it into powder. And after that, what happened? The stone began to grow into a big mountain covering the entire earth. Daniel says, this is the kingdom which God is going to establish on this earth. <clears throat> Let us read Daniel 2.44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Very good, brother. So, <clears throat> the kingdom which God is going to establish, it shall be standing forever, it shall never be destroyed. So, a mountain in the Bible means kingdom, a kingdom which God has established. Okay. What does brass uh, mountain means? Mountain means kingdom means? What does brass mean in the Bible? Remember the tabernacle study? You see, we have studied now. <clears throat> All the things which were in the holy, you see, was made up of gold, holy and the most holy. But the things which are in the court were made up of uh, brass. <clears throat> so what does this represent? You see, this represents, dear brethren, you see, the two different types of nature. You see, huh? gold represents the divine nature, you see, while brass uh, represents the, you see, the perfect human nature. So, these uh, two 
types of metals. One represents the divine nature. One represents the perfect human nature. Therefore, you see, brass or copper is much similar like gold, but it's not gold. It's a roll gold. Even whatever we wear, you know, brass items, watches, looks like gold, but these are not the real ones. Similarly, man was created in the image of God. God is in divine nature, the perfect gold nature. And man was created in his image. Brass or copper is in the image of gold, similar to gold, but not gold. Hence, uh, the brass uh, in the Bible represents, uh, you see, <clears throat> human nature, perfect human nature. The two brass mountains means two perfect uh, human kingdom. The first kingdom which God had established on earth uh, <clears throat> was in the Garden of Eden. You see, when Adam was created, God had established his first kingdom. But when Adam ate the forbidden fruit, Adam lost the kingdom. Instead of being a king, he became a servant. <clears throat> then, you see, we have studied about the God's plan. When Christ is going to come and rule for this, on this earth for a thousand years, <clears throat> at the end of thousand years, this kingdom is going to be restored back to, you see, the mankind. So, mankind will again be given back this kingdom. So, it is at the end of thousand years. So, there is a gap. There is a gap between the two mountains. There is a gap between the two kingdoms. You see, after Christ thousand years rule, he is going to surrender the kingdom to God. Let us read 1 Corinthians 15 chapter brother, 24 to 26 brother. <clears throat> Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Very good. So here it says, Christ has to rule till he destroys all enemies and puts all enemies under his foot. Under God's foot, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. You see, then come at the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God. You see, Jesus will deliver the kingdom to God. And God will give back the kingdom to <coughs> human being. Because the original purpose of creating the kingdom in garden was to give it to man. At the end of thousand years, it will be restored back to mankind. So, in between these two kingdoms, is a 7,000 years gap. And that is the gap in which God has made a beautiful plan. So, it is in 7,000 years that these four chariots come out with four different horses. What does it mean? You see, this is much similar to what we studied in Genesis 2nd chapter class. No? The river came out of Garden of Eden. You see, it went into four different parts. Pishon, Gihon, you see, Edical, Euphrates. So, this represents uh, the four salvations, uh, four uh, groups of people who have been selected by God in these 7,000 years. Mm -hmm. Two representing the heavenly salvation, the other two representing the earthly salvation. You see, this is what we see in God's plan. You see, uh, <clears throat> lack and 44,000. Go to the heavenly salvation. The great multitude, they go to the heavenly salvation as well. And the ancient world is come to the earthly salvation. After that, the general world also comes to the, you see, earthly salvation. These are the four, you see, uh, salvation. This is what uh, is represented in these uh, <clears throat> four chariots. Therefore, the clue is given where in Zechariah 6 5, it, is, it says, no. Uh, the angel said, these are the four spirits of uh, heaven which go forth from the standing from the presence of the Lord of the earth. That is God through his Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you see, he is developing these four groups. Therefore, four chariots are mentioned, not four horses. If only horses were mentioned, <clears throat> the interpretation would be totally different. Horses uh, <clears throat> always represents doctrine. <clears throat> but here, <clears throat> the horses along with the chariot represents 
you see huh? organization or group it's not a individual it's a group that can be carried you see by the horses or chariots is being pulled by the horses or similarly groups okay god's holy spirit is developing the four groups of people in this 7000 years okay now which is the first color horse that came out we say it is a red horses now you tell me which is the first group of people among the four salvations we saw like and 44000 the great multitude the ancient worthies and the world now among these four who were the one who was selected first you see the first group of people to be selected by god's holy spirit you see where the ancient worthies you see first from abel to john the baptist you see god selected the ancient worthies first because they were faithful to god you see huh? hence uh, these were the people who were selected by god's holy spirit who walked on the path of god okay now how come uh, the ancient worthies are compared to red in the bible yes ancient worthies are compared to red in the bible how you see <clears throat> there were so many sacrifices uh, that were given by people of israel you see uh, to God, but there was one particular sacrifice that is mentioned to us in book of uh, uh, Numbers, 19th chapter, that is called as a red eifer. You see, that red eifer was to be sacrificed in a particular way, you see, and uh, that was not sacrificed in the temple, but not in the tabernacle, also not in the temple, but outside very far outside the camp so let us read numbers 19 chapter brother. numbers 19 chapter verse 2 and 3 brother this is the ordinance of the law which the lord hath commanded saying speak unto the children of israel that they bring thee a red eye without a spot wherein is no blemish and upon which never came you and ye shall give her unto eliezer the priest that he may bring her forth Without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. Ah, you see, a red eye has to be selected without blemish, upon which came never a yoke, it seems. And it was to be slayed where? Not inside the camp, outside the camp. You see, not in the tabernacle or very far from the camp of Israel, outside the camp. We have studied that this one in a tabernacle. And completely everything has to be sacrificed. Even everything, you see, the hair, you see, all the, the dung, the blood, flesh, everything has to be burnt. And after burning, they have to take the ashes and place it in the tabernacle. If somebody becomes unclean, you see, they need to take these ashes, mix it with water that is there in the tabernacle and sprinkle upon the unclean person. By doing such thing, this unclean person would become clean it seems. Read verse 9. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the high fur and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. Ah, it is a purification for sin. Uh -huh. Now read verse 11, 12, 13. He that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean for seven days. He shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whoever, verse 13, whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead, and purified not himself, defile the tabernacle of the Lord, and that's Soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanliness is yet upon him. Ah, because the water of separation was not sprinkled. So, this was used as a, you see, purifying uh, agent to cleanse themselves from uncleanness. Now, how is this compared to the ancient worthies? See, the ancient worthies, they were never under the Lord, you see. God chose Abraham before the law, Joseph, Jacob, they were all chosen before the law. 
So there was no yoke upon them. They were justified in God's sight. God considered them as sinless. Hence, they were called as friends of God. You see? And they never came into complete relationship as sons with God. They were very far. You see? Outside the world. They never lived like the worldly people. They were very far. You see? And yet their sacrifice was so powerful that even if you just take the ashes, mix it with water and uh, sprinkle upon unclean, it will become clean, it seems. Now, what is the meaning of ashes? You see, ashes means uh, as soon as we see ashes, the thing that comes to our mind is that something is being burnt. You see, something has uh, been given as a sacrifice. It is totally consumed. And the ashes uh, brings us to remembrance uh, that there was a sacrifice once given. And this uh, being mixed with water. Water means what in the Bible? Water means word of God. So, the sacrifice of the ancient world is when studied from the word of God, it has a purifying effect upon us. Like for example, you see when we are totally depressed, when we lost all the things, whatever we have, you see, and uh, we are uh, got nobody, no friends, no companion, nobody to share our feeling. You see, that is the time that we need to study the book of Job. When we read Job, we feel encouraged, we feel cleansed. It helps us to stand for the Lord. It helps us to remain faithful to the Lord. The sacrifice of Job written in the Bible, the ashes, the water, mix it. It is sprinkled upon us. It gives us strength and energy to walk in that way. You see, whenever we feel lazy to pray, oh, every day praying, oh, let us forget. You see, that time if you read book of Daniel, you see, we feel strengthened. Daniel, though he was commanded that anybody praying, uh, except the king, uh, they will be thrown into a lion's den. Even then, Daniel boldly opened the window and prayed to God. You see, without even any hesitation, dear brethren. So that uh, is the cleansing. That is the red eye fur. Whenever you want to sin, feel like sinning, remember Joseph. Though he had a beautiful opportunity to lie with the Potiphar's wife. You see, he ran away. Why? Because... The God who is invisible, he sees all these invisible activities which no man can see. You see, remember if somebody would have been in that spot, he would have definitely used that opportunity. That is the cleansing agent, Jebrand. This is the sacrifice of the red eye fire. Jacob was so strong. You see, he decided to leave everything for the Lord. You see, are we ready to leave everything for the Lord? We will think thousand times, but Jacob became a pauper. He never had anything with him. He left all his father's property and went in search of God. Uh, dear brethren, David. Uh, whenever we sin, whenever we sin guiltiness, uh, we should remember David. Uh, because David, uh, though he sinned, uh, he approached God in a humble way. God accepted him. Dear brethren, this is the cleansing agent. Read Hebrews 9, chapter 13 and 14. Hebrews 9, chapter 13 and 14, brother. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an eye for sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, pours your conscience from dead walls to serve the living God? You see? If the ashes have so much of power, how much more the blood of Christ? The ancient word is a sacrifice of so powerful, it seems. You see, then think about the blood of Christ. It is still more powerful, dear brethren. Therefore, we need to remember. Remember Moses, you see, he was a very, you see, talented, uh, you see, person. He lived in Egypt, in palace. He was supposed to become the next uh, emperor. But uh, he decided to live with his... Uh, Brethren, as a slave, 
will we decide that one we will take decision no let us lead a comfortable life why stand for the truth and all let us go wherever we want you see but uh, moses when he was aged he denied that one because he had respect for god word of god this is the cleansing agent dear brethren which we have therefore the red horses signify the sacrifice of the ancient worthies these are the first group that was selected okay now the second horses were black horses the chariot with the black horses now the clue is given that is went to the north country now, what is mean by north north is always support to the opposite to the south south is always down north is always up okay that means what you see south means down means what earth north up means always it represents god the place where god is living see the bible verse is there Psalm 75, 6, brother. For a promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Very good. Promotion neither comes from uh, south, west, east. And which is the balance left over direction? North. It comes only from God. God only has to give promotion. Not any human being stupid. Because God is in the sides of the north. Read Psalms 48.2. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. City of the great king, site of the north. Remember, wait, uh, which direction did Lucifer, uh, you see, decide to go? You see? When he sinned against God? Read Isaiah 14.13, brother. Uh. For though I said in thy heart, I will ascend into the heaven, I will exalt my throne over the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. See, I will sit also, you see, in the congregation on the sides of the north, because north is the place where God is residing. Therefore, these are the people who go to the earth, nature which God himself is having, the divine nature. The immortal nature. Now, who is having this immortal nature? It is none other than, you see, the little flock. 1,44,000 were offered the opportunity to be partakers of the divine nature. You see, therefore, how do we need to go to heaven to be partakers of divine nature? Can we just go on bed of roses? No, we need to go on the black horses. Now, what does black mean in the Bible? Black, always the black color signifies dull. You see, it always signifies death. Remember, when somebody dies, people wear black cloth. You see, and uh, the van which takes the dead, uh, dead body to the grave, that is also black in color. You see, uh, when we speak now, somebody tells, uh, how is your life? Oh, it's so dull, dark. My life is full of darkness. Dark means what? Uh, you see, tribulations, pain, sorrow, you see, sufferings. Uh, this is the chariot uh, we need to go to, go to divine nature. Read Acts 14.22. Acts 14.22. Acts 14.22. Confirming the souls of the disciple and exerting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. True? Much tribulation. We need to enter into the kingdom of God. Not with just believing Jesus. That is the first step. Through much tribulation. What did Jesus say? If any man wants to come to me, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. Carry the cross, responsibility, risk, pain, sorrow is there. How did Jesus go to heaven? He went on the same black chariot. Read Hebrews 5 8 with us. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. See, Jesus, though he were a son, learned uh, obedience by the things which he suffered, not by anything else, only things which he suffered. Huh? Now, how is the church? What is the color of the church? Read Songs of Solomon 1 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as tents of Kedar, 
is the curtains of Solomon. I am black but beautiful. I wish the church. She is black, it seems. Will anybody marry a black woman? <laughs> I have to think twice. Hey, I want a fair woman. See, the church, the bride. You see, of Jesus, she's black. Uh-huh. Now, why she's black? Huh? Black means what? Pain, sin, suffering. You see? But she's beautiful. That is the inner beauty which God looks at as. Now, why she become black? Read verse 4 with her. I will bring it forth, said the Lord. Sorry. Songs of Solomon, one four. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. Thou pride, love thee. Okay, then read what six. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me, my uh -huh. mother's children were angry with me. Yes, the sun has looked upon me. Uh -huh. Because sun, sun means what? You see? Sun means what? Heat, temperature. You see? Trials. Because of trials, uh, you see, the pride has become dark. If you go in the dark sun, what will happen? Will become tan, no? Will uh, color will change, become fair, instead of fair, become dark. That is what uh, in this source only we need to go to heaven and be partakers of the divine nature. We need to be faithful to God until death. Okay. Now, this represents uh, the 1,44,000 who will attain that divine nature. Okay. Now, the third chariot. It says the white horses followed the black horses. Now, which is this white horses who go to the heavenly salvation, who follow the 1,44,000 on the divine nature. This is the great multitude who are clothed with white robes. You see, these are the great multitude who follow the little flock and go to the heavenly salvation. But they lose their crown because they never proved their faithfulness to God until death. But uh, yet they were pure. But that purity was of no use. In Revelation 7 chapter also we read now, you see, there was a great multitude standing before the throne, having, uh, you see, the palm, uh, palm branches in their uh, hands. You see, they were standing uh, before the throne. It was a uh, number which uh, no man can count. That represents, uh, you see, the unlimited people who can come and consecrate. Uh, you see, and they were white, wearing white robes means what? Uh, you see. After consecration, God gives each and every person a white robe. That has to be maintained clear, neat and pure. You see, you see, then only what will happen? You see, then only we can attain divine nature. But uh, imagine this white cloth is completely spotted, defiled. We can't be taken to heaven. Whenever we sin in our thought, word and deed, immediately it has to be cleansed or else a spot will always remain on our cloth. So, dear brethren, you see, this has to be cleansed by the blood of Christ, uh, daily approaching this throne of grace and mercy, seeking help, uh, but the great multitude they neglect it. They neglect it to overcome. Hence, uh, they are before the throne, not on the throne. The church is promised to sit on the throne and rule with Christ. Uh, as they lost the opportunity, they are waving the palm branches, a sign of victory that we are also overcome. But not of that class, you see, that has to be of the divine nature. Read 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter 11 to 15, brother. For other foundation can no man lay them that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, who day is stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Mm. You see, in the fire shall try of what sort it is. Every man's work shall be tried, it seems. Okay, brother, continue with that. Huh? If any man works abides which he hath built there upon, he shall receive a reward. 
if any man works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Ah, if any man's works remain, even not put into test of fire, he shall receive a reward of divine nature. But if he fails, if it is burnt, he shall lose the reward of divine nature, but at, uh, he shall attain the heavenly salvation. Be like a great multitude, like angels, uh, and serve the Lord and the church uh, instead of ruling with Christ for a thousand years. So this is the white horse. You see, so this represents the great multitude. Now we already studied three groups. So which is the last balanced leftover group? You see, that is the world. Hence, uh, you see, the bay horses went to the south country means what? The earthly salvation. North represents heaven. That means opposite of north is south. That means opposite of heaven is earth. That represents the earthly salvation. Dear brethren, we have studied in length about thousand years. When Jesus is going to come back and return on this earth, you see, he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. So what will happen in a thousand years? All the dead will come back to life. So, after coming back to life, what will happen to their age? Already so many people have become old. In Christ's kingdom, the age will run backwards. You see, the age will run from, if they died at the age of 60, they will rise at the age of 60. But from 60, 50, 40, it will come and stop at 30 years. Because 30 years is the age of a perfect man. That's what Job 33, 25 says. His flesh shall be fresher than of a child, he shall return to the days of his youth. He shall return back to the days of his youth. He shall come back, you see, to the days of his As they remain faithful to God, God will give changes in their body. So, this represents the world salvation for the entire mankind. You see, young sir, what is the color of the horses? Grizzled. Grizzled means spotted. White horses which spot of black, black, black. That means all the mankind when they resurrect on this earth, they will have the, the bad qualities in them. The spots will be there all over. But they need to overcome and become pure. Then only they can attain that complete, uh, you see, perfection of Adam. That represents the uh, grizzled horses. Now what does the bay horses represent? Now in Zechariah, we read the bay horses requested God that they may run to and fro. Uh, let us read that verse again, brother. Zechariah 6, 7, brother. And the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get ye hands, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Ah, they requested a the lot to walk to and fro through the earth. To and fro through now, did anybody walk to and fro seeking the permission of the Lord? Same way like this one, Lee? Yes. You see, remember book of Job? You see, the Satan, the accuser, also was uh, walking to and fro through the same way. Let us read Job first chapter 7 verse. Job 1 7, mother. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Aha! Uh -huh. Going for to and fro to the earth. That means these are the people, even in thousand years, even after giving the truth, they'll be here also. They'll be having all the evil activities also. They'll try to do bad things. Sir. Hence, sir, they shall be destroyed in second death. Fire will come from heaven directly. And destroy in second in front of everybody. So that every mind will learn what is the everlasting punishment which God is going to give to mankind. Read Isaiah 26 9. Isaiah 26 9, brother. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Very good. You see? Huh? The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness when the judgment is upon the earth. So that is the time to learn righteousness. But what will happen to the wicked? Continue, brother. Isaiah 26, 10, brother. Continue. Okay, brother. For in this month... Oh, sorry. 
Let favor be seated to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? Ah, you see, ah, though grace be given to the wicked, yet he shall not learn righteousness. In the land of wickedness, in the land of righteousness, he shall do wickedness. So these shall be turned to second death at the Abraham. Therefore, you see, through Jesus, there are two salvations. Heavenly salvation and earthly salvation. In heavenly salvation, there are two parts. You see, remember the promise which God made to Abraham. I see it shall be blessed as a stars of the sky, sand of the seashore. Stars of the sky means heavenly salvation. Two groups of the heavenly salvation, like in 44,000. The earthly salvation, the sand of the seashore, means what? You see, two earthly salvation. The ancient world is and the gentle world. So these are the four salvation. These represent the four chariot. Dear brethren, so this is the secret that is mentioned in the book of Zechariah. This is how we study the Bible and 